okay uh, welcome students uh, this is the part 3 of the analog design using lt spice series in the first part we saw uh, we learned about ce amplifier in the second part we learned about cb amplifier this tutorial is to dedicated towards cb amplifier and in the demo portion we'll also will not only simulate cb amplifier we will also see the cas code amplifier right this is the schematic of an common base amplifier okay so what is the difference we notice here is now we are going to apply the source into the emitter of the transistor right and the output is tapped from the collector of the amplifier of the transistor and the base is the common ground for the input and output and that's where the name common base comes this is the common ground for the source as well as the load right what are the characteristics of the cb amplifier it has got high power gain high voltage gain current gain less than one that is the current gain is almost alpha so if you see uh, the current which is going to be drawn from the source is ie whereas what what is going at the output is ic so we know the relation between ic and ie so that is uh, alpha so the current gain is less than one low input impedance okay so it has got a very very low input impedance when you look into the emitter of this transistor the current is re uh, the, the impedance is re now uh, this is generally not desirable because if you are this is being driven by another amplifier low input impedance will uh, adversely affect the gain of that amplifier right which is driving this amplifier however in certain applications like rf amplifier uh, rf applications rf amplifiers where suppose you are going to uh, couple an antenna to this amplifier the, generally the antennas are low input impedance uh, devices like uh, generally a, a antenna you can call it as a 50 ohm it has got a 50 ohm impedance so there you know, to ensure maximum power transfer from the antenna to the amplifier this is good because it, it this also can be tuned the input impedance is of the order of few ohms so in, in those applications this is good like it has got a high output impedance again i told you the how how output impedance is good when you're driving another amplifier but if you are going to finally drive a very low load then these kind of amplifiers are not good so you got to use an cc amplifier whenever you have to drive a low output impedance it has got a high bandwidth so this is the highlight of this particular cb amplifier that it has got a very high bandwidth okay now let, let's try to figure out an, um, the voltage gain and the current gain of an cb amplifier right so you are applying a voltage out here so if you see the equation uh, let's assume that re that is the input impedance as seen into the emitter is much much lesser than re this will be in few ohms this you're going to put it in kilo ohms so obviously so re and re we defined in the last it is r pi divided by one plus beta that is r pi is the impedance as seen into the base re is the impedance which is seen from the emitter obviously the ib and ie are related by the factor one plus beta so, so similarly re and i r pi will also be you know, uh, related by the same factor one plus beta so v in is minus i e r e so i have put a minus here just to avoid confusion so we are assuming ki i is going to flow like this right whereas we are applying vs out here so i put a minus out here okay what is the output voltage out here out voltage is ic which is coming ic is again i, I put it you know, i have taken an uh, direction into the transistor so ic so the output voltage will be ic rc parallel to rl right now if you assume ki it is going to drive a high very high load then you can neglect rl so it will be rc so the voltage gain if you divide these two it will be rc divided by re right so it is it, it is this gain is exactly the same as that of an common emitter amplifier so the voltage gain remains same okay whereas in the vol in the uh, common emitter you had a current gain also of beta whereas here the current gain is alpha so the in common emitter you have a current gain of beta whereas in the common uh, common base amplifier the current gain is alpha which is less than one okay and there is so, so some other differences that is here the gain is positive 
signifying that v in and v out are in phase whereas in the common base when it, it is going to, it, it was opposite phase like if, if the the common uh, in the common emitter amplifier if you if an increase in voltage at the base will draw more current and this voltage will drop here right here an increase in voltage here at the emitter okay will decrease this voltage because you are biasing this transistor at some voltage and when you are increasing the voltage this I, I e will drop so the drop will increase here uh, that will cause an increase in voltage here so these two voltages are in phase okay so that is in phase okay and the gain is dependent on rl like in the case of an common emitter amplifier so rl has to be high right so it cannot drive low loads if you put a low uh, if you put a low rl the gain is going to be rc parallel to rl and it is going to decrease the overall gain okay the main advantage is no miller capacitance at the input if you see here this capacitance okay there is no voltage gain as we move from this point to this point there is no voltage gain here okay unlike an common emitter amplifier when you are moving from the base to the collector there is a huge voltage gain here there is no voltage gain because you are looking into a low impedance node at the emitter where you have coupled your input signal that is the reason there is no miller capacitance and it has got a high bandwidth right so what about the input and output impedances okay this we already discussed r in r in is the input impedance as seen into this node which is r e parallel to small r e okay if you assume this is in going to be in ohms this is going to be in kilo ohms so you can assume the input impedance is r e it has got a low input impedance what is r out r out is at this node okay you have r c parallel to r zero r zero is the output impedance of this transistor so r c parallel to r zero right this design the design is exactly similar to that of a common emitter amplifier right you want them first of all we fix the power like in this case like in the ce amplifier we take a power of 2 mill 20 millivolt uh, milliwatt it should be watt okay 20 milliwatt and i see the current which is you know uh, flowing uh, dc current we have fixed at 1 milliampere because 1 milliampere we have seen the characteristics of i and uh, 2222 at 1 milliampere it had a reasonably good beta so we took 1 milliampere so we have 1 milliampere so we want to have a 10 millivolt signal here when there is no signal ampli uh, applied here so that it is exactly in the midpoint we did is 20 volt right if it is if this is at 10 millivolt we'll get maximum swing so what do we do so rc we calculate by vdd by 2 by icq so you get 10 kilo ohms once you get 10 and what is the voltage here i told it has to be 10 percent of vdd so since vdd is 20 volt 10 percent is 2 volt with that 2 volt uh, again we assume the same ic is going to flow through re actually ie will flow follow but let's approximate it to an uh, ic so it is 1 milliampere 2k so you get the value of re as 2k right then we find IB. IB is IC divided by H. This is 20 microampere, right? After that, VBBB. What is the voltage out here? This is 2 volt here, right? Plus 0.7 volt. So you just don't want the transistor to be biased exactly at the knee point, okay? So you you have say approximately 0.3 volt here. So you should have around 3 volt out here, right? And now we say ki if IB is going to flow into the transistor, we will say it at least 10 times of the current should flow from r1 to r2 for stability purpose so r1 plus r2 is 20 divided by this is ib at least 10 times of that current should flow here so you have a 10 factor here so r1 plus r2 is 100k now to find out r1 and r2 we also know that this is good this has to be 3 volt it's come from here so 3 volt so we did r2 divided by so putting substituting these values here we get r2 is equal to 15k and r1 is equal to 85k so this is how the final design will look look like right so the main characteristics it has got a high bandwidth right it has got a power gain it has got voltage gain current gain is less than one it has got low input impedance okay this is beneficial in many circuits whereas it could be a drawback in in some circuits and it has got a high input impedance okay 
Now we will go to the demo portion where we will simulate a CB amplifier and compare the performance with CE and also we will make a cast code then cast code and CC cascaded. So the, these three configurations we are going to see now. Okay, this is the uh, schematic of an CB amplifier and this is the schematic of an CE amplifier. You see the only difference out here, all the parameters are same. Okay, the only uh, difference is here you are giving it into the, the input signal is being applied to the base of the transistor and the emitter is grounded through this uh, 100 micro capacitance out here. Here we are giving input signal to the emitter and the base is grounded through this 100 micro capacitance. So just uh, do a transient simulation, right? Transient simulation for 10 milli. When we run this, right? Let us now uh, plot the outputs, right? So you see, see what is uh, this is they are out of phase, right? With each other. Right. Why is it out of phase? Because for the CE amplifier, we say the gain is negative, whereas for the CB, it is positive. So we get almost the same gain. Uh, okay, we can even plot the uh, input signal also. So this, this is the input signal, right? Let me put one more add plot pane and let me take V in, right? This is V in. So if you see, uh, and this, this blue is CB. So uh, this is only 10 millivolt, whereas this is close to uh, no, 6, uh, 3 volt peak or 6 volt peak. So, so it's a high gain. Okay, gain is close to 300. This is the input signal right in what is shown in red it is 10 millivolt signal and you say blue one is cb so cb you will find key it is in 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 phase with this whereas ce amplifier right which is shown in green is out of phase so these are the difference between these two amplifiers one is it will be in phase and one will be in out of phase so let me close this okay now let's do an, an ac simulation and see the bandwidth Right, so I'll tell you, Anna, you will not be able to see the difference in bandwidth here. Right, okay, let me run this and let me plot this and let me plot the CB. Right, so you're finding a similar bandwidth, okay. And why so? Because in here we are going, we are using an uh, BJT which is 2 and 2 2 or most of the uh, BJTs which are available in LT spice they got very very low bandwidth right so the bandwidth is getting restricted by the uh, transistor itself these are all uh, low frequency transistors so we don't uh, I don't have a library where I can uh, uh, simulate these things with a high frequency amplifier like in VLSI design uh, now when we go with MOSFETs and all we are going to use a uh, high frequency MOSFETs or uh, high frequency BJTs so in those frequent uh, when we use those there will not be any restriction from the transistor side okay only there will be restriction from the the design side so in those conditions you can clearly you will be able to clearly visualize the difference in bandwidth between a CB amplifier and CE amplifier okay understood so when you go for a VLSI design or when we are going to make an RF amplifier with high frequency transistors the difference in bandwidth okay will be clearly visible in in this case you, you are finding the bandwidth is very very so slow but you you can take you can you know, understand that the bandwidth of cb will always be very high so let me close these windows okay now uh, this is something known as this we saw last time this is an ce amplifier which is driving a cc amplifier okay now this is an cascode amplifier and what is that cascode amplifier you have an CE amplifier which is going to you have an 
CB amplifier placed over a CE amplifier. So what is the advantage of using you know, this structure is, see, uh, when you look, you know, now we know what is the gain of an uh, CE amplifier. It is R pi, uh, right? Uh, it is in a beta into RC divided by R pi. Now what is RC? RC is the gain which is uh, impedance which is seen from, from the collector upwards. Here what is the gain? If you see upwards, you know, this is a common base amplifier. So when you see upwards, the resistance is going to be only RE. So the gain is going to, RE is very, very in few ohms only. So there is no gain in this CE amplifier does not provide any gain. Okay. So there is, since there is no gain, the Miller, there is no Miller capacitance here, right? It's coming down here. So the bandwidth will improve. There is no gain. Only IB will flow, beta times IC will flow here. So what is this going to do? that IC it is just going to transfer up here and there is going to be gain here because IC into RC. So the gain is going to be from this point to this point, right? So by shifting the gain from here to here and making a low impedance out here, that is when we see from the collector upwards, there is an impedance of only RE. So, so there is no gain at this point. This, there is no AC gain from here to here. So the Miller capacitance is avoided. So that is why it will have an improved. So this structure is a combination of CE amplifier and a CB amplifier known as a cascode amplifier. Okay. The advantage is, okay, the low high bandwidth of CB amplifier also is taken care of in this. We are taking the advantage of uh, uh, low, uh, high bandwidth of CB amplifier. Okay. We are not giving any gain out here. We are providing gain only out here. Right, and why did we use uh, uh, a CC amplifier out here so that we can drive low loads? See, the, uh, we can draw even 1k, 1k. So, I put low loads out here. So, let's just do a simulation and see the AC gain. Right, first, let's see what this is the output of a of the CE amplifier, and this is the output of the CAS code amplifier. So, you see, there is some cascode amplifier has got a marginally high bandwidth. Like I said, if you are going to use transistors, high frequency transistors, this difference will be very, very significant. Okay, for RF applications, this difference will be very significant. Here, around you know, 1 megahertz, between 1 megahertz and 10 megahertz. So, that is the restriction of the transistor. These transistors itself, uh, you know, if you see the specifications, you will find that the uh, transit time of the transistors are in or are in nanoseconds. So that imposes severe limitations for high frequency application. Right? I can even then let me close this and let me plot the output out here. Let me run this once again and let me plot. This is CECC. Uh, combination and this is these cascode and CC. So you will again find there is a slight increase in uh, whereas the gain is the same almost it, it is uh, around close to 45 dB whereas cascode has gotten marginally uh, cascode CC has gotten marginally uh, a higher bandwidth. Again I am repeating it this 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 you can see there will be significant difference between these two once we use high frequency transistors okay so that's all in the next uh, class we'll see about differential amplifier so that's all uh, for today thanks a lot